Okay, let's turn the device on so you can see how it provides safe, single chamber pacing support with just these three control knobs. Great. Okay, so to turn it on, simply press the power button. Remember when connecting to a patient, be sure to have parameters set that will not cause pacing until sensing has been established. You'll also want to turn the outputs to 0.1 milliamp so there's no pacing until sensing is established. I see it's ready to pace at 80 paces per minute and 10 milliamps for either the atrium or the ventricle. Yes, these are the nominal settings. The device will automatically go to when the device is turned on. I see there's a flashing green light. Does that indicate pacing? Yes. And there's a blue light that indicates sensing on the right side of the screen. That's great. I can see at a glance what the device is doing while also watching the heart monitor. Yes, and another feature is the lock and unlock button. Can you guess what this does? Does it prevent accidental reprogramming? It sure does. That's a great safety feature. You can lock the device by pressing the lock button. This one that shows the key. It will also lock automatically after 60 seconds from the last parameter change. Okay. What if you happen to be using rapid atrial pacing? Will the auto lock occur? Yep, after five minutes have elapsed. Next, we'll discuss the knobs used for programming the settings. The top knob controls the rate. The rate range nominal is 80 paces per minute and goes from 30 to 200 paces per minute for all of your patient types and needs. Yes, we need those higher rates for our pediatric patients. So go ahead and change the rate to 70 paces per minute. Okay, but first I will need to unlock the device. Great job remembering the unlock button. I can hear and feel the clicks as I turn the knob and adjust the rate. I see you're already picking up on turning clockwise for higher numbers and counterclockwise for the lower numbers. Thank you, that was easy. Okay, so next is the output button. This controls how much energy is used for each paced beat. I see this is measured in milliamps. Yes, that's a constant current device with output in milliamps. I see this is also clockwise for higher numbers and counterclockwise for lower numbers. Yes, and it's the same for sensing. Remember for sensing, the higher the number, the less sensitive it is. I noticed the range is from 0.4 millivolts to asynchronous. Yes, just by turning the knob, you can go to asynchronous pacing. We don't use asynchronous pacing very often, but it's good to know it's easy to program. Should we go over the various pacing modes now? That would be helpful to review. Sure, for single chamber pacing, there'll be three letters used to identify the mode. The first letter represents what chamber is paced. The second letter tells us the chamber that is sensed. The third letter indicates what the device does in response to sensing. Since this is a single chamber device, the chamber is determined by where the lead is placed in the heart, either the atrium or the ventricle. Typically, the modes will be either AAI or VVI. So AAI mode means pacing and sensing in the atrium, and VVI mode means pacing and sensing in the ventricle, correct? Yes, that's right. The I refers to inhibiting, which means it will not pace when the patient's intrinsic beat is sensed. So for single chamber synchronized pacing, either AAI or VVI will be used. Yeah, great job, Christy. Now let's talk about asynchronous pacing. Asynchronous pacing means the device does not sense intrinsic rate. It should be used when a patient has an intrinsic rate below the paced rate or no intrinsic activity. It can also be used to avoid or mitigate the effects of oversensing if appropriate for the patient. So this is when sensitivity is set to async? I see. If I see the async, I'll know that no sensing is occurring, so I'll only see green lights indicating pacing. That's correct. And since this is a single chamber device, the mode won't actually appear on the device. You'll need to know what chamber is being paced. Okay, got it. Once the device is programmed, press the lock button. Otherwise, it automatically locks in 60 seconds? Yes, and then the lock indicator will appear. Now let's look at the battery indicator. When all bars are present, the battery is full. As the battery declines, there'll be fewer bars. And when there's less than 24 hours left on the battery, the indicator will start flashing. So when I see the battery indicator flashing, I should change the batteries. Correct. As soon as you can safely change the batteries, you should do so. And with each new use or patient, you should install a new set of batteries. Is it okay to change the batteries if the device is actively pacing a patient? 
Well, Medtronic doesn't recommend changing the batteries while in use or actively pacing a patient. However, there may be times when that is necessary. Can you think what button may be very helpful? The lock button? To ensure the program settings are not changed. Correct. Locking the device is needed before replacing the batteries. Also, remember pacing will be maintained for a minimum of 30 seconds when you're changing the batteries. Okay, so I should be sure the device is locked and be ready to quickly replace the batteries. Yes. Now only one more step to practice with the user interface. Let's turn the device off. First, I'll need to unlock the device. Yes, great job remembering that. Then press the on off button. Yeah, it's not turning off. To turn the device off, you need to press and hold the on off button for a minimum of two seconds. All right, now it's off. Great. So this concludes our training session on the user interface and single chamber pacing.